Hello everyone, Dr. Manish is here with another video about COVID-19 and just wanted to share some of my thoughts about uh, the recent sign and symptoms uh, found in patients uh, with COVID-19 infection. Uh, we used to think that COVID-19 is only affecting uh, lungs, that's why we call that SARS-CoV-2 pneumonia. Uh, but now we know uh, that uh, SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 uh, use, uses the lungs as an entry point to our body. And uh, that's why we see uh, more and more signs and symptoms such as coagulation issues. As you know, there are many new signs and symptoms uh, with COVID-19 infection recently. And uh, you can see in these pictures that we have some coagulation issues in uh, fingers and in toes and any other organ, uh, which is very dangerous. It could actually cause a cardiovascular uh, attack, cardiovascular issues and cerebrovascular issues and could be very uh, fatal. A little bit about uh, the pathogenesis of COVID-19 in our body. As you can see in this chart, uh, COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 can cause uh, lack of ACE2 receptors. And lack of ACE2 receptors per se can cause uh, increasing the superoxide um, activity in our body, which is ROS or uh, radical oxygen species. And these uh, superoxides can cause oxidative stress uh, in our uh, endothelial cells in our vasculature system or cardiovascular system. So that's how it's increasing the uh, coagulation factors such as von Willebrand uh, and uh, D-dimer. So when we have increased von Willebrand, uh, it could cause uh, increasing the platelet aggregation uh, which uh, could cause increasing the coagulation in our body. So that's why we see more coagulation issues. And as you can see uh, in different studies, uh, or we could find in different studies, it really effective. Um, it is really effective that we use some anticoagulants for our patients with COVID-19 um, infection, with severe COVID-19 infection. As you know, we all encouraging people to stay home, to stay safe, and that's true. But the issue with this uh, staying home is that uh, we're going to have lack of activity or lack of exercise. And we're not doing the, our regular exercise that we have been doing. Uh, some people have been going to a gym. Some people actually have been going to their jobs and then they, they are staying active. Um, by some sort of uh, daily activity, but not right now. And that's actually increasing the uh, probability of acquiring the chronic diseases. There are more than 35 uh, chronic diseases uh, caused by inactivity or lack of exercise, uh, such as diabetes mellitus type 2, um, cardiovascular disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and uh, depression and anxiety bone loss osteoporosis and uh, so on and so forth uh, and also one of the most important one that is uh, uh, really important in COVID-19 is increasing the coagulation issue in this study published in PubMed uh, in April 27 2020 very recent study, as we can see, anticoagulant treatment is associated with decreased mortality in severe coronavirus disease 2019 patients with coagulopathy. The 28-day mortality between heparin users and non-users were compared. There were 449 patients with severe COVID-19 enrolled in, into this study and they concluded that the anticoagulant therapy mainly with low molecular weight heparin appears to be associated with better prognosis in severe COVID-19 patients with markedly elevated D-dimer. So my recommendation 
is to stay active and walk five times a week uh, at a significant intensity uh, that is required uh, rest and also use the deep breathing techniques um, which is um, in increasing your lung capacity and uh, using your dead space and the breathing technique could be uh, you could actually uh, have a deep breathing and uh, hold it for five to ten seconds and do it multiple times each time that you're doing it and you could do it um, especially when you wake up and also during the day like so Yeah, it could be actually for five to ten seconds and um, also i want you to take omega-3 at a dosage of one to two thousand milligram per day and i want you to take uh, the ones that has the ratio of epa to dha uh, two to one or more that is uh, anti-inflammatory um, so i hope that you enjoy this video and i hope to see you in my next videos as well